Hi, I'm Ian Arbuckle and this is the recording of my very first live Linnean webinar. Thanks to everyone who attended and make sure you sign up for the next one. A little bit about me, so as I explained a little bit there, I was a senior electrical uh, design engineer uh, starting off as, as an electrician. Um, I went to night school, uh, did my electrical engineering qualifications, etc. Uh, I am... I was originally a technical director at, at Linnean and I took on the CEO role after about a year. Um, and, you know, basically my job is to um, still help with the products and developing the products and, and things like that as well, but also to, to run the business and make sure that we, that we grow the business, we grow our products and we grow our customers uh, like you guys. So, what we're going to talk about today, the introduction, a little bit about regulations, a little bit about considerations for the installer, options available. We'll talk about some linear products, etc. We'll talk about the testing that we've done for our products as well. And some we'll talk about some of the information that's out there as well that, that can be helpful when helping you assess um, your installations in terms of specifically premature, premature collapse. So uh, starting off we're talking a wee bit about the history so i mean as i mentioned the original linear clip product was for fire alarm cabling so here we are with the the, the regulation that was that was designed to comply with effectively uh, 5839 it's always been a requirement to have a, a an odd combustible fixing for fire alarm systems really because uh, of circuit integrity not premature collapse circuit integrity so fixings melt cables come loose cables disconnect systems don't work people aren't alerted uh, and that's that's the theory behind that. Um, so that is where the original linear clip came from, and that's that was always really been a requirement of that regulation, really, as, as far as we are concerned um, in, in our history. Um, also similar within BS5266 uh, was, again, circuit integrity, but in regards to hardwired emergency lighting systems, um, central battery systems, etc. cetera. Um, and it was, again, so that the circuit integrity was, was afforded. Um, uh, and it was also so it was more about mechanical integrity and things like that. Um, so Amendment Three, two thousand and fifteen, around about the time that uh, Lynn and I took over Linian, um, came into play after what was really some quite unfortunate events in the history of our industry and and, and the whole history of the human race. To be honest with you, as far as I'm concerned, um, but effectively Amendment Three. Uh, was the first time escape routes were mentioned was the first time that premature collapse really was mentioned in in the mainstream if you if you want to call it that uh, it was you know I designed it so such that non-metallic fixings uh, couldn't be couldn't be used to support cables uh, and the idea came about uh, unfortunately because of what's on this slide um, so for anyone who isn't aware um, this is very important to know when you're assessing installations for premature collapse uh, because this is why we have the regulation um, tragedies that have taken place where um, I know you know I'll let you guys read this while, while I talk if, if you want to um, but, but ultimately Firefighters have entered buildings. They have uh, attempted to rescue people and become entangled in collapse electrical cable. And that has resulted in the death of them and the people they were trying to rescue. Uh, and the, it's entirely preventable at the installation stage. Um, and um, I actually had a conversation with someone about this yesterday, um, but in terms of where we're at as a as a standard, as, as the British standard and things like that, it it seems to be it, it seems to be quite unique in terms of the interpretation of it by the installer. Um, other countries such as the US are, are light years ahead on this. They just don't have non non metallic fixings, and, and you know kind of never have. Um, and uh, the the right the regulations are much more descriptive and instructive, I would say, than, than what they are here. So uh, here we have to obviously make assessments ourselves. So. Um, it's important to see and to know why. Um, because this was entirely preventable, it was mentioned in the, the coroner's report that the building regulations or why the regulations should be updated to obviously prevent further further tragedies. And that was where the, the basis for Amendment 3 to the 17th edition regs in 2015. These are images, obviously, of the escape route and the collapse cabling and, and the escape route um, suspended ceilings 
no fixings, to be honest with you. Never mind non combustible fixings, uh, collapse cable, entangle uh, firefighters, entangle the breathing apparatus, um, and ultimately uh, ends, in, ends in disaster. I'm sure we can we can all agree. Uh, so regulations that were updated because of these events, um, and we've ended up now with um, the 18th edition regulations. And the changes have kind of given us a little bit more clarity on it. So the, the I think for a lot of people, the issue might be escape route. It might be premature collapse. I mean, that's a term that uh, requires definition. Um, and there has been work, good work done on that uh, to date, to be honest with you. Um, I think um, it's something that they're, they're, they're sort of trying to do. Um, and I'll talk about that a wee bit further on. But really just now we're talking about changes effective um, that have come into place and try to clarify where and when, but ultimately it's up to the installer to assess the installation and the risk of premature collapse with what you now know about the reasons behind the changes. So if there is a risk the cable can collapse in the event of a fire, it needs a non-combustible fixing. It's very simple when it comes down to that, but you need to know why and you need to know how to risk assess appropriately. So. The regulations uh, were updated to say that it requires cables to be adequately supported against premature collapse in the event of a fire. Uh, this applies basically throughout the installation. It, uh, ultimately, I don't think it ended up being the wording. I think that was from the, the draft for public consultation. But they have subsequently released Amendment 2, um, which comes now to say that we have um, the addition of Appendix 13, which helps clarify escape routes. It gives a more, more of a reliance on um, I would say fire the fire engineering aspect of of the installation and um, more of a an awareness of that which is definitely a, a step in in the right direction but again i bring it back to the installer needs to know what happened and what we're trying to prevent and to be able how to be able to risk assess the installation appropriately that um, and, that, and that's 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 my firm opinion on the matter um but moving in in the right direction regulations wise um Considerations. So this is the bit I'm talking about, really, risk the risk assessment side of it. So I think in any aspect of the job of an electrician or a design engineer, you have to be a risk assessment machine. I mean, that is basically the job in its entirety. Um, you have to, that you're, you're constantly risk assessing things, not just your own health and safety when you're on site or on a job, but the the, the outcome of your installation, the, the risk associated with injury, failure, everything else that goes with an electrical installation, um, you should be constantly risk assessing that. So, um, and I think to a lot of people, risk assessment, when you when you say it, it sounds scary, you know, and and, and I, I certainly felt like that when I was on the tools, you know, and somebody came up to you at a clipboard and said, you need to do, you need to do your risk assessment. Bear in mind, I'm, I'm no spring chicken here, guys, you know what I mean? So this was a while ago, um, but I, I yeah, I, I, it's really simple. It is really simple. And if you are working as in our industry uh, in any any capacity, whether it's a wholesaler, an installer, a designer, you do it every day anyway. You maybe just don't know you're doing it. Um, and people that are good at it, that are familiar with it, with the term, will probably agree agree with that if you if you feel there as well. So, um, but yeah, in terms of the considerations in the risk assessment for premature collapse. Um, I'm trying to kind of highlight here briefly the things that might be obvious to some people, but might not be obvious to, to other people um, when when thinking of it. So the architectural design of the business of the of the building um, is building construction, substrate materials, the architectural layout of the building is obviously very important because then that, that's just starting to get into the fire engineering aspect of it. Ceiling construction obviously very important given the events that we, we showed previously uh, and what happened there and and and, and the fire escape fire and escape strategy obviously is is very important as well because um paths in paths out effectively and if you're thinking about what, what's happened and what we're trying to prevent that is that is ultimately the the critical path within the building where we need to have a solution and um, 
Structural design, though, also important. Again, construction materials. As, is your installation inherently protected against structural, against premature collapse because of the building structure? Not something I think people consider very often, but you know, if you're looking up, can it fall down if there are, say, for instance, suitably spaced steel beams? Um, so definitely something to consider. Um, Position of structural elements, that's, that's effectively what, what I'm saying there. Um, so the sector that we're in as well um, is important. And that's really when you're looking at what types of cable management, what types of cable you're going to be dealing with, um, as you would do with any. So the sector comes into play there. Is it a public building? Is it a telecoms um, install? Is it, you know, because I get it, that's actually important to highlight because the regulations apply to all cable and i don't think that's understood enough either it does not matter whether you are installing a data cable a fiber cable a copper cable it doesn't matter these regulations apply to cable full stop so that, again that comes into when you're talking about the sector different sectors different cables and um, so yeah that's just an example of some other sectors you make when you're considering it, healthcare defense energy rail education they all have different use they all have different strategies they all have different um designs that are going to have to be considered uh, when you're assessing for premature collapse m e design i think the mechanical design is one that's maybe un like you're underlooked uh, sometimes as well uh, i think that we need to consider when you're looking at the risk of collapse you need to consider what's what's beneath the cables what's near the cables um what happens if there's a fire and and something collapses effectively is their installation protected against premature collapse is there whatever they put in going to come down and, and take out your containment um uh, you know the, the, this all needs to be considered um the life safety systems the cause and effect of the life safety systems so if there's a activation here there's an evacuation here etc uh, of your fire alarm systems etc um, your, your evacuation systems um massive consideration because these are basically used in the circumstances that we're talking about having to protect against um security and access design super important uh, to be honest with you um you know their installation is is critical in the access and egress of the building so if you're in security if you're if you're in access then you need to be on top of your game when it, when it comes to this from both the circuit integrity and the premature collapse perspective um and yeah, the, basically, light and small power in the HVLV infrastructure are important as well. Different types of cable, just because it's a big HV cable in a basement, doesn't mean it's not liable to premature collapse. You need to you need to make effectively ensure that your installation is protected against it, no matter what you're doing. So yeah, cable selection is obviously important as well. I've spoken about that already. It doesn't matter what type of cable, really, and what application the cable has been used in, it, it should be protected if appropriate. So there are no standards at the moment for a product like ours, but there is one in the making, which I'll talk about in a minute. But there are no standards at the moment um, which basically say this fixing is suitable to protect against premature collapse. Uh, so we had a bit of a job in our hands um, to prove the integrity of our product when we were taking it to, to market. Um, and we worked with people uh, that you see there, uh, different test houses, different research people, um, and these they effectively helped us devise our own methodology when it came to assessing a fixing uh, to prevent premature collapse. So the realised that we were we had to assess what we were looking for, but so what temperature, what survival time, um, what you know how what. Is the response time of the emergency services to to what to different types of circumstances um and effectively there has been some work done this has been almost superseded um it was a bit of a an ad hoc uh, look into what might happen um and it was pretty damning for plastic plugs and fixings and things like that but there's a lot of dubiety over the kind of methodology of, of the test as well with no disrespect to, the, to, to those who conducted it but it, it, it's you know it's moved on since then uh, but i just thought it was it was worth mentioning as well um but there's there's some further work being done which again i'll talk about in a minute uh so yeah selecting cable supports we looked at you know what are the different melting points effectively of the different 
types of fixes that might be available. Um, I think Ali Nenium was one that snuck up and, and bit us a little bit when we did that work because he just we, we you know I'm not I'm not a metallurgist you know I'm an electrical engineer so I was quite I'll admit I was quite surprised that it's such a low melting point to be honest with you. Um, and uh, so yeah, we obviously uh, uh, steel is inherently fire resistant. Okay, it's got a, a melting point, melting point in excess of 1200, 1300 degrees. It's it really is. Um, and healthy fire, fire resistant material. So um, responsibilities, I think, rely lie with um, everybody in the industry to comply with this and to help move forward and provide more clarity around what is premature collapse and everything we've spoken about today. And manufacturers like ourselves, the contractors out there installing, the regulatory organisations, you know, the, the regs, the regulators, the IET, the, the, you know, these types of folk, um, the FM providers, the people who are maintaining buildings uh, and looking after them definitely need input into this. Distributors and wholesalers uh, are selling products uh, with a technical backup uh, and so absolutely need to be on, on top of what's going on and what's available and what solutions are there and um, research and academic organizations like we've used to help try and you know prove the integrity of of the fixing that we supply uh, they're absolutely important to this as well and your kind of verification your bodies your people who are certifying ultimately electrical installations for end users or they need to be um absolutely contributing and ahead of the game in this as well and we all need to work together in partnership with each other uh, in my view to, to to move it forward so um i've been talking I've, I've referenced this bit um a few times now in terms of a test that's in the making um but i don't know if uh, it, hopefully you guys have seen this document that these guys have released i personally i think it's i think it's pretty great i think it's, it's there, people still probably have questions but wow like they've really go, gone all in on trying to provide some clarity on this um it's free to download as well from their website um so bma recently published a guide to premature collapse which effectively tells people uh what is a uh, available uh, sorry what is um a, a better insight into the requirements of the regulations is probably the best way to put it a step in the right direction uh, offers clarity around things like spacings of fixings, uh, what to do in situations in like stairwells and um, temperature zones, you know, um, how hot are, are areas at certain parts uh, of, of, of the room of the installation of the building, um, uh, exclusion zones around doors in terms of the escape route that we've mentioned a few times and acceptable hanging loops um, from a premature collapse point of view, which is which is another another good one as well. And it's all been done in consultation with the fire service, which is a massive tick uh, in terms of what we're trying to do here. So um, definitely get that downloaded and read it. But the good thing is they've also committed to developing a test um, for manufacturers of fire rated fixings like ourselves. So hopefully that's going to cover some or all of the aspects we've mentioned previously um and I, I yeah we're very much very much looking forward to this i mean it's something that we've been very passionate about for some time now so uh, uh, it's going to be um yeah it, it's it's needed and and it's going to be there and, and i think from the installer the uh designer point of view um it's a level of comfort that everybody wants now um when they're installing what is a, a fire rated fixing so Options available. So on the market, you'll have seen all sorts of things. We've got P clips, we've got metal cleats, we've got all round band, you know, um, limited ranges on these things. Some can be quite expensive, some don't have a melting point, some don't come with warranties and guarantees or testing. Um, where we come in is the everything that that's everything that we that we do do. <laughs> so um, our, our, our product is a single component, so there is no raw plugs there's no um yeah there's no plastic plug there's nothing there's there's nothing that can be um there's nothing combustible about the fixing at all effectively it's a single piece of steel um it is faster to install because there's no screws or plugs um and it's corrosion resistant uv stable and, and all the other good stuff that hopefully many users and installers out there know and um, we do offer through our fire clip and super clip range solutions from cables uh, from 
six mil to twenty five mil, um, including conduit, uh, etc., as well, um, and a range of colours as well. Our super clips are super strong, um, and they are forty four kilogram pullout loads, which for a twenty five mil maximum overall diameter of cable is. I'm sure anybody would agree a fantastic ratio considering the, the spacing of the cable and the weight per meter of, of the cable. So really good, solid fixing and um, faster to install and it looks great too. So yeah, uh, we also offer solutions for TNE coaxial cable. When I spoke about earlier, all, all types of cables must kind of comply with this. That does include fiber cables, which tend to have very small diameters and are very delicate as well. Uh, so a nano clip solution was something that we put a lot of thought into um, to be able to produce. Um, and it uh, ticks all those living boxes faster, safer, simpler. Uh, and it, um, it you know looks great on, on the installations too. It's basically in, invisible um, against the fiber cable. So. Um, Earthrod Pro product is not a cable clip, as you may have noticed. Uh, that has been um, absolutely nothing to do with premature collapse of cable whatsoever. Um, it's just in there because I designed it myself and I'm quite proud of it, to be honest with you. Um, I, uh, I designed this off the back of um, hitting myself in the, in the shin with a, with a, a mash hammer trying to put an Earthrod in when I was uh, an electrician. Um, and I, honestly, I was deserved, determined to find a solution to this problem. And effectively, it turns the earthrod into a drill bit. Yeah, there's a tip that goes with it as well, carbide tip. Uh, screw it on the earthrod, put it in your drill, put your earthrod in the ground. Wonderful. So testing that we have carried out back to premature collapse. Um, we have carried out testing to a number of standards. What we did was look at the cable that survives sort of time scales and temperatures we had found in the research. And ultimately that led, led you to kind of soft skin uh, cable or soft skin fire rated cable or MICC really. Uh, and so when we had to look at the standards, which they are tested to, and we were pretty confident that they could be adapted to assess the fixing as well. So we had a chat with some of the test houses that we showed you there and they agreed and we adapted those tests to assess our fixing. And so, Line certification has been widely accepted by the market. It's been really comprehensive. Um, and it's also available uh, on request, um, should anybody wish to see it. Um, but yeah, there you go. You can see there, the London Underground compliant one you can see there is, um, that's that's one that assesses the, the toxicity of the coating uh, on, the, on the clip, which is one that we developed ourselves actually to be corrosion resistant impact resistant and low low smoke so uh, that's actually a really stringent standard and uh, difficult to to comply with um which uh, and you know we're pretty proud of, of getting <laughs> getting that one um so yeah um any questions on on standards or anything like that are, are more than welcome um so yeah uh, design with installers in mind that one's important to me because i used to be an installer um we setting the standard hopefully um and you know there's others out there uh, bima for example as we spoke about who are pushing ahead with a different uh, clarification on 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 regulations um we look at regulations we look at changes in the market and um, our clips are being used now within the fiber market electric vehicle charging uh, to help day-to-day -day installers with 18th edition compliance um and um we also have recently shifted to supplying our products in um, eco-friendly packaging. Uh, so our packaging is both recycled and recyclable fully, um, including the ink, which is, that one wasn't, wasn't easy. Again, credit to the marketing team for, for that one. Um, and uh, the, learning, the wider learning team for pulling it together. Um, and yeah, so all of our products are tested um, and Hopefully, uh, this uh, this presentation has been of some some use to you today, um, and hopefully we can have a chat uh, just now, and, and uh, I can answer any questions. So I'll pop questions up on on the screen, um, and we'll see what happens. But thank you, thank you very much.